It is incredibly creepy. Those creepy crawlers are called jumping worms, and they're an invasive species. They're found in all sorts of soil type, from forests to gardens, and they're spreading quickly throughout the United States. Brad Herrick is an ecologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison Arboretum. He has the dirt on these bad worms. Jumping worms, they're not really, you know, jumping like, like you and I think of jumping. They're more just sort of uh, flopping, more flopping. And so if you get a, get a bunch of jumping worms together, you know, they'll probably be able to get off the ground maybe an inch. So not, not very high, but an, an inch is pretty high for a little jumping worm. And especially when you have a lot of them in one area, it's pretty creepy. You know, they can get up to, depending on the species, eight inches long and they'll act like a snake. Ick factor aside, why are jumping worms a problem? There's no predators for them. Um, they can multiply quickly and there's lots of food for them. The problem is when they get to be high, um, have high abundance, um, they eat so much of the food. And, that, and by food, I mean like leaves that fall from the trees, which we call leaf litter. Or in your garden, they'll eat little roots in your garden. And that really changes the whole ecosystem. It changes the soil, it changes the plants, changes what can live there. Um, and it's usually things like the, the native species that are supposed to be here that, that really um, get harmed the most. Jumping worms can damage gardens and sugar maple forests particularly. You're left with is just bare soil, which is really hard for native plants to grow. You get a lot of erosion kind of happening in those forests. You happen to get rid of birds that like to nest on the forest floor or other animals that, that live there. And so they fundamentally change what the forest looks like and how it behaves. And then in, in garden, instead of having nice soil for growing plants, they turn that soil into little pellets, like coffee grounds or taco meat. And it's really loose and plants can't grow in that and water can't, it doesn't take up water very well. How can you find out if jumping worms have wormed into your garden or yard? What you can do is, it's a really fun technique called a mustard pour. You take a third cup of dry mustard powder and you mix it with a gallon of water and you shake it up really well. And it kind of becomes this yellow slurry and you can pour it over the soil and wait 30 seconds to a minute. And eventually, if there's any earthworms in that soil, they will rise to the top. And what's happening is that they don't like the feel of, of that mustard on their skin. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a skin irritant. And their reaction is to get out of that soil as fast as possible. And they come vertically out of the soil and you can pick them out, put them into a bag, right in the garbage. Aside from the whole jumping thing, Herrick says jumping worms have another distinguishing characteristic. Jumping worms have a white ring around their body, close to the head, and it stands out from the rest of their body, which is sort of brownish and pink like a normal earthworm. No other earthworm has that white ring except for jumping worms. That's a really easy visual trait that you can, you can tell. Herrick is working with other scientists to try to stop the spread of jumping worms. We don't have any good kind of larger scale, um, you know, eradication program or technique going on. Um, unlike some of the other invasive species that you might've heard of like gypsy moth or emerald ash borer, this is a relatively new one and we're still trying to figure out what's, what's going on. The best thing that we can do is to make sure that when we are outside going for hikes, if we're, if we're avid gardeners, make sure that when you leave, just bring a little boot brush, brush off your boots. That's like a really easy way to make sure that, hey, I'm not going to be spreading this any more than it already has. And if we all do that, that can really be helpful. He also has another piece of advice. Do not use jumping worms for bait. They do not like it and they will slither away, they will wrap around your finger, they will drop part of their tail as a way to escape that kind of you know predation or behavior. And so we really discourage the use of especially jumping worms for fishing bait. Herrick says it's important for people to do what they can to stop the jumping worm army. They're found in 37 states, as far as we know now as well as Ontario. Um, native species can quickly do a number on native species that don't have defense mechanisms against, against their invaders. So it's still early in the invasion, but it's happening fast. This is Inside Edition Digital.